Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Battletech. I'm going to go ahead and shut up for the cutscene here, and then we'll talk about what we expect. That's a very effective, nice, short idea of, or rather the lore, behind the Battletech universe. So that was kind of cool. So this is Battletech. This is a turn-based strategy game. Essentially in kind of sort of the vein of XCOM, but not really. Um, basically just turn-based strategy with mechs. And how could you go wrong with that, right? I mean, Into the Breach, we were, we were that's what we were waiting for, is this game when we were playing Into the Breach. We wanted some mech action, and here it is. Plenty of mech action. So, we're going to be playing the campaign. Um, that basically covers the story. I've played a little bit of this, basically get the sound right. So I won't be totally surprised at what goes on here. Um, basically, it's... well, we'll get into the story soon enough. Uh, my intention is to finish the campaign, and that'll probably be it. We'll probably never touch skirmish mode or anything like that. Um, if we die during the campaign, that is going to be it. I am not going to pick it up. It is going to be a failed campaign, and that is just going to how it's going to live. If I decide to pick it up later, maybe, maybe. But I'm essentially going to treat it not entirely like a roguelike, but like decisions matter. So we're not going to reload saves. If anybody dies, it's going to suck. But if we get into a slow spiral of doom, eh, you know, shit happens. Out in the Battletech universe, out in the wilds. So that's just the way it goes. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but you know, if it does, it does. So anyway, let's go ahead and start in the campaign here and see what we got. Yeah, so the load would be from my test campaign for the sound. So let's just go. We're going to do a standard campaign because I have no idea what the custom campaign would possibly be. It's all about difficulty settings, various other things. We're going to go plain vanilla. No mods, no anything like that. We're just going to go plain vanilla. I didn't even touch the uh, options. We'll go into the, that later. Um, essentially, one of the major complaints of this game came out was that the combat took, just took too long. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. You guys can also see my cursor. That's by design because I'm going to be pointing to a lot of different things. Uh, I will try to keep it off the screen during cutscenes, but... Um, I forget for a little while, I'm sorry. But here we go, another cutscene. I am Kamea of House Arano, High Lady of the Oregon Reach, Protector of Coromadir, and the Sword of Restoration. But I am not a hero, no matter what the stories say. A hero would have sacrificed more, compromised less. A hero would have done better. You know this, of course. You were there. 
My father used to tell me stories about the ancient times. About the Star League. A golden age of prosperity. Upheld by the great mech warriors of old. Guardians of the innocent. Protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne. It was hiring a mercenary, skilled enough, perhaps ruthless enough, to carry the day. Hiring you. I still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it, for belief in my cause or just in my money. But whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind, your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. Whether you believe it, that's up to you. All right, restoration. I think she's a little harsh on herself, but we'll see. Okay, so we get to customize our character. Basically, come up with the idea of where we came from, what we're doing here, all that wonderful stuff. So the background goes through quite a few pages here. I'm going to go ahead and read through this. Regan Reach is a small kingdom in the Rimworld periphery, region of space that lies the outskirts of the more densely colonized inner sphere. It's home of the Regan Coalition, a federation organized around a parliamentary monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. Remember, parliamentary monarchy, probably the parliament holds most of the power, and the monarchs of figurehead would be my guess. So that's kind of a recent invention, mostly because of some king that I forget the name of. And mostly, when most people think of parliamentary monarchy, they think of England. Um, but that's not the only kind of parliamentary monarchy. Sometimes the monarch actually has a decent amount of power, and then he just signs the rules the parliament passes, rather than, like in England, where all the power would be a part of what the prime minister mostly has, and that's an elected position. So most likely it means in this case that the monarch actually has the power because it's kind of important to the story that she has power. That's very likely what happened here. Anyway, for three generations under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has re remained a relatively peaceful corner of the periphery. Here your story begins, all right? Okay, so decades ago, your family came to reach from a bunch of different places. So if I knew anything about the Battletech world, and I don't know very, very little. If I knew anything about it, this would totally be a time for me to dive into lore. Basically, from what I've read of this, and we could read through these, but I think we're just going to read the one that I'm going to choose here. So basically, these guys are effectively Japan. It's reductive, all right? I know that's re super reductive. I'm sorry. You guys are basically Japan, all right? Just go with it. The Marek are passionate, enduring fighters, valued just in equality. I think we're going to go with these guys, but just to go through the list here. Federated Sons are kind of the paladins of the group, kind of. Um, yeah, they see themselves as righteous warriors type of thing. They're in Commonwealth. Um, what I love here is the line. Reputation for not being particularly strategic thinkers on the battlefield. I would you like that as your reputation across the galaxy? That seems messed up. Capellan Confederation. Um, basically, they made themselves into a socialist police state. So think of these guys as uh, Starship Troopers, effectively. Because everyone has to be... Um, so take great pride in their citizenship, which is earned through service to the state. So the same idea as you would get through uh, Starship Troopers. Magistry of Canopus is basically just your jack-of-all-trades. Destroying Concordate is i mean they're basically the klingons effectively if you want to have a really rough analogy rumor periphery is kind of just these guys are anything they could be anything there's no real set government for these two they kind of make it open but the deep periphery is that even on this line here it's really unlikely a mech warrior would say i'm from the deep periphery because of the it's like saying like there's no modern day equivalent for it but it would be like someone going to New York City in the 1800s and saying, I'm from the California Republic. It doesn't make any real 
sense to say that I'm from there. Because then people view you as a wild one. And that's totally not, uh, not, what, not usually what people want in a civilized society. Anyway, we're going to go with the Marek. Because I like the idea of uh, valuing justice and equality above all else. I think that's pretty cool. Also, oldest and theoretically most democratic of the great successor states of the Inner Sphere. Um, the Free World's League is actually a broad coalition of many minor noble houses. Most of the League's history has been ruled under martial law by Captain General, who by tradition is from House Mark. Cultural diversity and relative independence of its component regions are once the greatest strength of the Free World's League and its greatest weaknesses. Right, so diversity breeds strength and also breed division if it's not handled correctly, right? So, both sides of the pie there. So we're going to go with Mark, because what the hell, the Free World's League kind of goes with the whole Star League thing, right? Kind of gets into the the history of Battletech Universe. Um, depending on what you read in Battletech lore, the Free World's League is kind of like the inheritor of the Star League. The Star League, originally, from what I understand, was um, basically a coalition of all the colonized worlds from Earth. But as Earth became legend and became this lost world that no one ever goes back to, um, these divisions started happening, and you get all of these divisions. And so now it's been like, you know, almost a thousand years. Well, okay, it's, it, we go by the timeline, it's been about 600 years. But think of what happened in 600 years, like, you go back to the 1600s, like, most of America was barely even colonized. And most of the colonists, we don't even know their names now. You know, so 600 years spread out this far with, at the beginning, sublight communication. There'd be a lot of stuff lost to history that we just have no idea. And I think, actually, this takes place in the year 3000. So, like, a thousand years ago. Imagine the year of 1000. We don't even know most of the stuff that happened in the year 1000, right? So, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff's lost time. Anyway, the Star League was original. This was all the breakup points. This is supposedly the inheritor, but everyone really considers themselves the inheritor of the Star League mantle. It was like Rome, basically, you know? How many mini Romes were out there in the world? So, same idea, I think. Anyway, we'll go ahead and go next year. But we, I'm talking about us, we are of noble birth. Though immigrants of the Oregon Reach, your family soon established a comfortable presence in a small backwater system on the edge of Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become the de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the noble child, or the only child, oldest child, heir to the family's titles and ancestral battle mech, an old Blackjack BJ-1. This is where you met Raju Mastiff Montgomery, veteran of the succession wars your parents hired on for a season training as a mech warrior. Season? That doesn't seem like very much training, but okay. Depends how long the seasons are, I guess. Raju was a strict but capable teacher. He quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. I mean, excuse me, he should be called Mastiff at all times because that's his nickname. It was an uneventful life until... Until the day after your 16th birthday when shit went down. So here's where we choose stats. So we hover over these. Um, they give us little tool tips to tell us exactly what's going on here. Now, this is not necessarily the full picture. Effectiveness of called shot opportunities, reduces penalty. I mean, there's good stuff in here. I like the idea of being able to chance to hit. So gunnery would be nice here. We do piloting. That's melee hit chance. I'm not wild about melee hit chance. There's other stuff piloting does, though. So, I mean, that's still pretty good to pick up. Uh, tactics is something we saw before. That's called shot opportunities. Guts. Maximum health of the mech warriors. Also reduces penalty from weapon recoil, which is threshold of heat that triggers. Okay, so Guts is pretty good. I like that would fit in with gunnery, some of that stuff, but whatever. Um, piloting. Yeah, the melee hit chance. Okay, that's what that is. But also improves the stability of, stu of stuff that triggers unsteady. So also pretty good. Make sure you're always steady on your feet if you get hit. So I don't know. Depends on what we really want to go for here. I think maybe gunnery and Guts. Increase our chance to deal with ranged weapons. Guts also reduces the penalty from weapon recoil. That's a good combination, I think. Now, of course, as a lore, as a story reason, though, it sucks, right? Families betrayed. That really sucks. But sure, we'll go with this. Family betrayed. Your power set of power destroyed. Seat of power, rather. Seat of power destroyed. You defeated the betrayers, but you were the sole surviving member of your house, so everyone's dead. 
All right. Nothing but your family's ancestral blackjack left to call your own. You set off to make a new life for yourself. All right, then. On your own, on your own you fell into a life of... And so this work, it comes down to, okay, we could go for the stat boost, but really the story reason to go for any of these, you know, especially if we're going from a society that values justice and equality above all, it seems like we really only have two choices. We'd either be a soldier or a merchant guard. And I think since we already have the gunnery from somewhere else, right? So I think then we go for piloting. Let's go. Yeah, we'll be a merchant guard. Sign in as a guard for a small trading guild, providing security as the guild's caravan made trading runs between the inner sphere and the periphery. Largely uneventful life, but you were able to put your mech warrior skills to good use in the occasional scuffle with pirates and uncooperative local governments. Great. Until years later, you cross paths with Raju Mastiff Montgomery once again. While escorting a supply caravan to a small outpost in the outskirts of the Oregon Reach, you were set upon by pirates and left for dead. Raju happened to be, the, be visiting the capital city and picked up your distress call. Upon rescuing you, he offered you a job in House Arona Royal Guard. So it is that you find yourself reunited with your old mentor, preparing your ancestral battle blackjack for guard duty on the coronation day of Lady Camilla Arano. All right, so here we go. We get to set up our character. So, um, so we have a bunch of character portraits. We enter a call sign. I don't think I can actually enter in my full name here. Nope, can't actually do it. So we'll just be peace. That's good enough. Uh, random names. I have no idea. We can choose a pronoun. So this pronoun not only changes, um, well, it will change this, but it will change the available character portraits. If I choose they, I get a selection of everything. These are all the portraits available. Or if I choose a specific one, I think we'll go with he for now. Um, then I can choose for any of these. Of course, I always just customize it. So like I can pick like this bald dude who looks awesome dude here not wild about that one he looks probably the closest to me I usually get a buzz cut but otherwise it's kind of close Anybody else good here not wild about the five o'clock shadow his nose is enormous I suppose reasonable I'm trying to look somebody who maybe looks like me he actually looks kind of badass I like him he's awesome I don't know what he's looking at off to the side there, but sure. He has a wild look in his eye. I'm not, don't just think I'm gonna trust him. He has an intense stare. I'm not sure about staring right at the camera when it's being taken. He looks kind of cool. Not sure about the chops, but uh, it's not too bad. Okay, maybe. I kind of like the hairstyle. That's kind of neat. I'm sure I'm not wild about the scar. We can get rid of that. Okay, no, this might... Okay, we like put on a goatee on him. That might be pretty close to me. So let's go ahead and do that. So, let's see. Um, we have fairy hair in here somewhere. Here we go. Eventually we'll get to something there. I mean, I'm not wild about the 5 o'clock shadows. That's really bushy hair, but maybe... Do we have like a lighter goatee? No, huh? That's it? Alright, we can go super bushy. I mean, that's kind of a letter goatee there. It's very musketeer. But, I don't know. That's a little bit too much. I guess we'll go this way. Alright. We can change our clothing a little bit here. Um, let's see. I don't know. I kind of like this outfit, but maybe not the colors. Let's see. This outfit's okay. I'm not worried about the red. Don't want to be a red shirt. Blue's okay. Do with the blue. The lighting. Do you want to change the lighting here? Purple lighting. Some blue. Kind of washed out. It kind of reminds me of... I don't know if you guys ever played Eve, but it's a very similar character creator, kind of. Move the camera. Oh, okay. So we move our camera around a little bit. Yeah, it's a very similar kind of character creator here. Where it's mostly just a portrait. And of course in Eve you never see your own portrait. Do you? I don't think you do. I guess we'll go this way. Um. So basically one I think is like no scar and no tattoo at all. Which I think is fine. The tattoos are kind of neat. 
They're very subtle, though. I guess if you need a tattoo on your face, it damn well better be subtle, right? Probably don't want, like, an overbearing tattoo or anything. Um, I mean, it depends on, you know, what you want, but I'm not wild about any of these tattoos. There's some of them on the neck and everything, but I don't know. They're okay. Then we'll go with this. I like him. He's cool. Save this. Okay, so we'll be Yarin? Benin? I don't know, man. Jensen? Mohammed Mahidi? Ryota? Luca? Forrest? I don't know, I would just... Alex, maybe? No, James. You know what? I like the name James. Let's go James. A good name. As for the last name, I don't know. Why? That's actually not bad. It's L-Y. Yeah, you know what? Let's go L-Y. Do it. L-Y. That's it. Okay. So our call sign is Peace. We're James Lee. Actually, that's probably Lee, huh? L-Y. Yeah, I had a friend whose last name was like... Shoot, it was like something, it was like S-Y. We just called her Psy, because that's what the way it looked like, right? But then it turns out when we were graduating, she actually submitted the actual proper pronunciation of her last name, and it was C. And everyone was like, what the fuck, man? Why don't you tell us these things? She's like, well, it wasn't important. I don't know. It seems like your last name should be, how you pronounce it should be pretty damn important, but what do I know? All right, so here we are. We're piloting up. Um, okay, so our piloting's three, gunnery's three, guts is three. Our tactics is low, but we can always we can always fix that. Okay, I think we're good. This is totally guts. We're good to go. Confirmed. I think we have another cutscene here. Okay, we don't actually. Yeah, so High Lord Tamadi Arano the second is dead. The Oregon Reach is left as an uncertain crossroads. Once prosperous, is now a kingdom in decline, surrounded by powerful neighbors. Lord Santiago Espinoza, brother-in-law of the late High Lord, is convinced that the slow-moving Council of Founding Houses must be dissolved. His proposed directive would conscript their house guard and centralize power under a single throne. He wants to be emperor, basically. However, the High Lord's heir, the noble Lady Camilla Rado, is determined to rebuild the Reach without transforming it into an authoritarian state. She refuses to enact her uncle's directive, and has rebuked his vehement pleas to reconsider. That can't go well. On the morning of Lady Arano's ascension to the throne, her loyal captain of the guard, Raju Mastiff Montgomery, makes preparations to escort her safely to the coronation process, a procession that awaits in Cordia City. So here we fucking go. Alright, 9 o'clock in the morning. Roughly. Mercenary unit Wolf Dragoons appeared in the Inner Sphere in 3005, supporting five regiments about much. Okay, so we are in the year 3000 or something or other. All right, good to know. Aquarius morale transferred to the battlefield, allowing more use of inspiration abilities in combat. Right, we probably won't see that in this tutorial here. Um, this is just going to be a simple tutorial. This is essentially, I mean, I labeled it episode zero for a reason. Is because this is just, can we move around, basically? We'll go ahead and do Command this. Interface initiated. Okay, so we can move the camera around. Or I can touch the edge of the screen, move that around. Okay. Do we need to rotate the camera? Like so. Okay, so some of this stuff is voiced and some of it isn't. Usually when it comes up in a dialogue box like this, it is not voiced, so I'm just going to read it. Okay, peace. Had the Espinosa refit yards rust to repair on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece, so we should run some diagnostics on it just to be sure. Standard field test, you know the drill. More importantly, though, I want to tell you more about the job I brought you here to do. Do me a favor and get that battle mech moving. Let's see if there's any kinks in the actuators. Alright, so we click on the mech warrior portrait. Or press tab to cycle between available units. So I can click here. I'll come right out and say it, kid. I wasn't completely honest with you the other day. There's going to be more to this job than escort duty. So you can see with the mech selected, there's a bunch of stuff here that shows the damage. 
Once we have a some target selected, we'll see a hit percentage for each one of the weapons. We can turn each one of these off or on. For some reason, they don't teach you that in tutorial. I don't know why. It's really important. Like, if you're overheating and the heat mechanic, you see this bar up at the top here. This is the heat of each weapon. And this, I think, is stability, but I'm not entirely sure what this is. I think it's the stability of your mech. Um, but I, they don't tell you that in tutorial either. Anyway, we're going to move over here. So it's basically just a double click. I can position so that um, we're facing a certain direction. I want to be facing this direction, so we'll just go. Brought you here because there's something wrong in the capital. It's been too quiet since High Lord Tamati's funeral. I'm worried about Lady Kamiya's safety during a coronation procession. Anyway, looks like your actuators check out. Let's conduct a weapons test. Target one of those burnt out old urban mechs and open fire. Like I was saying, I can't prove anything. But my gut tells me something's off. And a warrior trusts their instincts. So, because this is a tutorial, we have a 95% chance to hit with these guys. That's really unlikely in real battle, but sure. Why not? I mean, they're not moving. So, that's why. So I could also like target like this area here and I can see well I would be able to see any weapons if they had any equipped on here but these are just test dummies so we'll just open fire here. All weapons committed. Like that was probably overkill. Enemy mech destroyed. Good shot. Your guns are in working order at least. Been training Lady Arano since she was 14 years old. She can be naive at times and proud, but I have no doubt she'll be just an effective ruler. It's unless to see her safely to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital with her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria, well, she's only been training under me for a single season. She's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. There's a lot of you, truth be told. Okay. You can be trained in a season, that's like three months. To be a strong mech warrior? How easy is that to pick up? Three months. What can you learn in three months? You can't even learn a language in three months. Right? I mean, to be really proficient in a language, well, it depends on the language. Like, Japanese would take you, like, two years. Spanish would at least take you a year. Like, a skill. What can you pick up in three months? Art, maybe you could pick up, like, the basics. I guess you could drive in less than that, right? Yeah, driving tests usually take about, what, maybe a month? But piloting, I guess I don't know what like a fighter pilot would have to go through or a tank, a tank driver. I guess I don't know. Would that be three months? I can maybe see that. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, anyway. Anyway, we should run a check in your targeting computer. That drone over there, the one moving through the tree line, put some hurt on it for me. And when it, then when it turns, take it out with a rear angle shot. After it's down, we'll keep moving. Come is like a daughter to me. And her late father, High Lord Tamati, was a good friend. Okay, so I can target... Okay, so grab my guy first. Hit tab. Change targets here. So, looks like 95% for everything. So I'm going to shut off... Like, I don't need the AC2. Um, it's just an auto cannon. Don't really need it, I don't think. We're going to shut those both off. We have a limited amount of ammo for those, so shutting those off is actually not a bad idea. Uh, if we had missiles, they would also have ammo here listed. But the lasers, so we're going to get a little bit of overheat on these lasers. I could shut some of these off. We didn't need them. Um, but I think we'll just go with this. Let's open fire. Engaging target. Okay. Now, he did get a lot of cover there. Victoria pulls no punches, but she's been a loyal companion to Kamea since they were kids. Aside from you, there's no one I'd rather have by my side in a fight. Okay, so we probably shouldn't have fired there because he told us to wait until he turned, and now he's turned. So now we now we open fire from behind, and now we know his flank because he has his symbol on him. Actually, that's the cover symbol, I think. Let's see here. So he's in the forest. It's going to reduce his damage by 25%. He does have cover. 25% um, damage reduction, but does not stack with guarded. Okay, so I think just he's in the forest. Forest is providing cover. He's a training target, so he's easier to hit. That's why he has 95% and everything. 
against melee. Yeah, so this is a tank. Um, they are strong against top attacks. Like, if we have any long-range missiles, they're always going to come in from the top. So that's really bad for these time tanks. But uh, we don't need to worry about that because we don't have any missiles on this thing. So you know what? Let's just open up. All weapons. Let's go. All weapons committed. Totally didn't need to do that. All we could have done just pure AC2s and that would have been fine. All right, nice shot. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with the Arya Egan politics, but the Reach was badly shaken by High Lord Tamati's death. It needs a smooth transfer of power, and Kamiya belongs on the Coromont throne. Go ahead and fire up your jump jets, kid. Once you descend this cliff face, aim for that patch of ground there near the edge of the lake. Let's aim over here. We just need to jump down there. So we select our mech. Jump button right there. And there we go. Engaging jump jets. Enemy detected. Yep, yeah, structure I was damage. Of that. Jump jets build a lot of heat. And that was more than your engine could handle. Head on into that water. We need to get you cooled off. Okay, so you can see if I select my mech again, we'll see that my heat got way over. That is not good. You usually never want to be that high. Uh, the marker there indicates where basically you'll get an overheat warning. You can go past it, but you really don't want to. Uh, walking into water or being in ice terrain is a good way to uh, minimize heat. Plasmin leak detected. Jump jet malfunction. Jump jet system damage. System inoperable to repair. So basically we can't jump during this mission. That's okay. Oh, for the love of all the gods. That's what I get for insisting on a rush job. Not that I had much of a choice. The Espinosa refit yards were backlogged like you wouldn't believe. It's like they were trying to process every single Royal Guard mech in time for the coronation. Probably were. There isn't any time to get your jets replaced, so we're going to have to make do without them. Go ahead and take that mech down with a melee attack. We'll make sure nothing else is going to break it down your blackjack before we take it on Cormont Road. Alright, so this teaches about melee. We usually wouldn't cool down that fast in the lake, but they just waited for us here. Although we killed down pretty fast. That is the rate we would. All I have to do is hit V. And we attack. Alright. Okay, that was more of a bull rush, but sure. Good hit. At least that's solid. Alright, one last test. Once you take a blackjack up to a sprint and evade my attack. Push that engine, kid. If something goes wrong today, I want to know that your mech can maneuver. Alright, the farther you move, the more evasive change charge you will gain. Each evasive charge makes you harder to hit. So, select my mech. It's okay. You see the little arrow where it says sprint. That indicates that we get one evasive charge. They want us to get more than that. It's okay. That's three evasive charges. Those stack. I don't exactly know how much it is, but sure. Full throttle. There you go. Yep. And evasive totally made that miss. Congratulations, Peace. Your blackjack's is combat ready as it can be, given the circumstances. For what's worth, I hope that my suspicions shall not be unfounded. We end the day having a good laugh what a paranoid old man to become. But if not, I know that you'll be ready. All right, time to move out. Lady Ron is waiting for us in the mech bay. An impressive display, Sir Raju. Of course, this mech warrior was a student of yours. I'd expect them to know their way around a cockpit. Um, I have no idea where she was talking from, but sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so I can move over again. Um, what we could do, we go into options here. Uh, actually, there are no options. Oh, no, settings. There we go. Okay, so what I have turned off, uh, actually, is off by default. Is the speed of combat a single player? Basically, that skips a lot of the movements. Um, so we're going to keep that down. The attack zoom, I think we're going to strip this down to almost never. Um, do like a fly. It does happen. Melee cinematics, we're going to drop that down pretty low. Jump cinematics, we drop that down pretty low too. Sprint follow cam, we're going to drop that pretty low. It starts off in the middle for all these. I'm going to drop it even further though. And then we're going to have a target shoulder camera on all the time. So we can always see what our mech sees or can't see during the attack. Uh, we're not going to show the UI during attacks. We're not going to zoom to new contacts because I think that's just damn disorienting. 
Auto select units when not in combat. Doesn't tell me exactly what that means, but it's on by default. So we're gonna leave those. Dynamic attack camera. You know, it could make for a cinematic experience. I think we're gonna leave it on. And of course we have the controls, the key binding, videos, we have the resolutions, all that wonderful stuff. Um, we're gonna leave most of this on. Gamma's a little bit up because YouTube's a little dark sometimes. Um, I have turned music down. I'm gonna put turn down even more. Uh, the master volume is mainly for cinematics, though the cinematics volume is all the way up. Sound effects, I'm going to drop that down just a little bit because it was a little noisy there. Keep the voices on high. They're going to interrupt me a little bit here, but we're going to turn off like Warrior Chatter. Keep the subtitles on, though. Um, audio on. That's just... Can we turn the audio ambient sounds about the same as the sound effects? A little low, but not too bad, right? Music, though, I just don't want to get content ID match. This video is probably going to get content ID match if they cut scenes, but so it goes. It's all right. We'll save this, and I think we're good to go. All right, let's get out of this junkyard. Beast, allow me to introduce Camille Rano, the soon-to-be High Lady of the Oregon Coalition. Lady Victoria on this channel? For the time being, my father has summoned me to the Picton Docks. I have a fleet inspection and a tour of the family refit yards to preside over before the coronation. Behold, the responsibility is a noble daughter, a fount of tedium that never runs dry. I know the feeling, cousin. By this time tomorrow, I'll be responsible for the entire reach. Give my best to your father and don't be late for the tourney. Gambling dens are already taking bets on how long it'll take me to cripple that customized monstrosity, you pilot. Old words, cousin. The only victory they'll be celebrating is mine. You may be ascending the throne today, but my cargo is more than a match for the family heirloom that you call Battle Mech. And in the arena, I reign supreme. That's true. We'll see, cousin. We'll see. At any rate, I'll see you at the turning grounds. Sir Roger, I'm ready to go when you are. Overland along the Coromont Road as the Rano tradition. I can will get you there in one piece. Peace, fall behind me. And remember what I told you. Basically, be on the lookout for anything Mission shitty. successful. Okay. That's nice and short. Um, I don't think we get a cutscene here. I think this is just going to be a loading screen. So, my... My plan for this is to treat this basically like we would XCOM. One mission, one video is basically what we're going to do. This was effectively our mission. Basically set up our character, went through the tutorial, learned the basics of how to fight. And we do actually get a cutscene. I remember the Oregon Reach of old. The time of the Great Expansion. I was just a boy then. Proudly we went forth bringing the light of our coalition to so many systems. And for what? To see our great kingdom slowly waste away? Year after year, the council deliberates while our economy falters, and the wolves bay at every door, while covetous neighbors plot against us. Well, I say it can go no further. We are here today because if Lady Arano will not act, someone must. I know what I'm asking of you. You will face former comrades, or even loved ones, on the battlefield. I take up arms against my own niece. But remember, today we sacrifice so that tomorrow we can return our kingdom to its proper glory, to its proper strength. So should you fall tonight, Know that you did so as true heroes of the Reach. To your stations! For the Directorate! So, shit just went down. Alright, he's gone full paranoid Emperor mode. Uh, okay, so somehow it took us from 9 o'clock in the morning to almost 1.30 to walk the road. Uh, so this is a technically, technically a separate mission. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Battle Tech. I'm Peace Universe, you're Peace Universe 2. And I'll see you guys when we start this brand new mission.